Hey, everybody. How are you? Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. This is Bermanology. Today, we're talking with Akron Archbishop Hoban, linebacker Eli Lee, a riser to know in the class of 2025, and especially a guy to know for Ohio State fans because he picked up a Buckeyes offer about a week ago, and he's pretty excited about it. We're going to talk to Eli about that and where things go from here next on Bermanology. Eli Lee joins us now, and Eli, I'm just going to tell you, uh, your life changed in a huge, huge way like a week ago, and I'm curious as to how life for you has felt in the, in that time and how, how have people in Akron treated you, how have the kids at school treated you different, how did your first game go when you had an Ohio State offer and the offensive lineman hitting you a little different, like how, yeah. how crazy how crazy is life right now? I mean, yeah, it's definitely uh, it's definitely been a little more chaotic lately in a good way. I mean, obviously I'm very thankful that Ohio State's offered me, and I mean, I never want anything else. It's just amazing. And um, I mean, everybody around me is just really happy for me, real positive about it. Um, so the people at school have all been talking to me about it, asking a bunch of questions, obviously. And then well, we know what the first question is, right? The question is, when are you committing? So let's just <laughs> dive into that. Yeah. How hard is it? How hard is it to not commit to that school that you grew up your whole life watching, game in? Game out, dreaming of playing there. Anytime you play a video game, you play Ohio State. Anytime all your – like, how hard is it to just say, slow down, Eli, slow down, Eli, slow down, Eli? I mean, yeah, it's definitely hard. I mean, I've been an Ohio State fan my entire life. My whole family's Ohio State. Just I've grown up just a fan, and everybody around me is Ohio State, Ohio State, Ohio State. So, I mean, I've, I'm just really blessed to, that they're even interested in me, that they've took the time to watch me and get to know me and see how I work and everything like that. And, I mean, I'm very blessed that I, they've offered me, but um, I'm going to take a little bit of time, but who knows what could happen. You know, I think the best – thing that happens in my job um eli is when i get to watch players like you uh get to this point you know you and i started having some conversations like back in january or february at that point you were just starting to get some some interest you made your first ohio state visit in the spring and then it's like oh this who knows what happens they bring yeah. you in for a camp in june you perform well but you didn't get the offer that day but like i think you felt like they noticed you then Jim Knowles tells you two weeks ago, hey, I'm going to be at your game this weekend. Like yeah. when, when you hear that, you kind of I'm sure your alarm bells go off like, OK, I need to I need to bring it this week. Yeah. Is it, does it change the way you prepare or does it change like when you're on the field and you see the Ohio State defensive coordinator on the sideline, does it change the way you're playing your game? Do you even uh, care? I mean, I, my whole game preparation and everything was the same. I mean, I don't really like to, to change anything how I go into a game, still film, study, focus up. But, like, it, obviously having him there and knowing that he would be there to watch some of us, it just really got me amped up and excited to play. I mean, I knew I had to, to ball out and play well. And it just, I mean, he, he liked what he saw from what I think. So, I mean, it went pretty well. You're just about – a little over 6'3", 220 some pounds from Northeast Ohio. Like that is in the history of Ohio State football. That's like a recipe for a linebacker, right? Like you hear the comparisons. I, I'm sure the coaching staff is, you know, when they say, hey, this is how we see you in the defense. They say, watch what Tommy Eichenberg does, who is a six foot three, 220 pound kid from Northeast Ohio, who is now, you know, second team All-American and, and a guy who is a year away from playing in the NFL league. Like, it's easy then to see the path, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you do now? How do you control what's in front of you to make sure that you, like this offer brings expectations that not everyone can carry. How do you make sure you can carry it? I'm just, I, I just use them all, especially this offer with just motivation to get better. And I mean, it's just, yeah, Ohio State wants me. Yeah, I need to, I need to get better in every way I can. I mean, I'm obviously, I'm not physically, I'm still a high school kid. You know what I mean? It's going straight to Ohio State. I still need to take many, many steps to get better. And that's what my motivation is, just get better and better every, every chance I get. You're going to return, I assume, for the Ohio State Penn State game. That's what you told me last week. That sort of environment is going to feel different for you when you know that you're a, a guy that everyone there is wanting to talk to and watch, right? Yeah, for sure. Our, Tommy, and I, I don't want to bring him up too much, but again, the comparisons are there, so let's use them. 
Tommy is a guy that uh, is extremely introverted, doesn't do a lot of vocalizing, was, was as a high school recruit committed, and I don't think he said a word to anybody the rest of the time he was in high school. Do you see yourself down the road, whether it's Ohio State or somewhere else? You never know. Maybe, maybe life changes and, and something crazy happens and you fall in love with a different school. Do you see yourself as the type of person who is going to be a Pied Piper for your recruiting class? I mean, so back to what you said about Tommy. I mean, the introverted, like not very vocal. I'm sort of like I like to lead by example. I'm not like a raw, raw type of guy. I like to just make my plays. That's what I meant to do. Just lead by example. Like, oh, he's playing good. Like, let's go. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not going to be standing in the huddle in the middle of the huddle screaming at everybody, getting them all hyped up. That's just I just let my play really talk for me. And I don't really um, I don't really care. <laughs> like, I care about the game of football. I really yeah. care. Play good. I, the, how I perform and everything. But like, I'm not a look at me type of guy. I'm not a like vocally like loud. And I mean, I'm, I'm a leader of the defense. I call the plays i look into coverages i do everything i'm just not more of like a hype guy i'd say uh, i one thing that i think is always interesting when it comes to in-state players receiving an offer from ohio state early yeah. is that schools that you have a relationship with may decide to back off because yeah. they yeah. think they think well you got the offer from Ohio State. That's 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 where you'll go. So we're not like once like Penn State, for example. You've been there a couple times. They haven't offered you yet. How? And I'm not asking you to put all your personal business out there. But in the last week, how has relationships with other schools changed? Has anybody? Uh, have you noticed anyone all of a sudden backing out? I mean, I haven't really yeah. noticed anybody too much backing up. I mean, obviously the way they like the way they talk to me, they all know, like they'll all, all at least like bring it up or something about how I got the Ohio State and we're like, Yeah, we saw you got that. But they're still equally as interested in me. They still show me like the same amount of respect and everything like that and they really still want me or anything like that. But um I mean, no one's really backed off, I'd say no, since the offer. You are um a, not ranked. On any national recruiting website, I think 247 Sports may have you ranked, um, but I, I think they're the only one. Yeah. You are, again, six foot three, 220 pounds. You play at one of the best programs in the country. Do you have any idea why people haven't caught on to you yet? And I know you don't care. I know that's not what motivates you, but yeah, is there anything specifically that you've heard from, from folks who are like, hey, this is why we haven't ranked you? I can't really think of anything uh, like a reason I haven't been ranked. I mean, I don't get into all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't pay attention to all my rankings and what's how many stars I am or how many like on all the different websites. Like I don't even really get on on those. But I mean, the only thing I could really even think of was a lot of the big recruits like started their freshman year and contributed right away. Like for Hoban, like rarely there's freshmen that like contribute at a, at a high level. I mean, they brought a few of us up for like special teams roles in my grade. I mean, I was just like a special teams guys, like one of five freshmen that got brought up. And then after that sophomore year, I was one of the main contributors on defense and I started. And this year, obviously I'm starting and contributing as well. So, I mean, maybe it's just that, but I'm not sure how recruiters or those websites think, but I mean, I just, I'm just going to use my opportunities that I have and play as best as I can. Hoban, you guys, as I mentioned, not only one of the more talented teams in the country, but I mean, you have now with the offer to you there, you, Sam Greer, who hasn't played much uh, at, at, on the offensive line with injury, Albert Hill in the back, in the back half of the defense with an Ohio State offer very early in his career. Yeah. Uh, Hoban has not been... I mean, obviously, Chip Trainum is from there, but he, he didn't go to Ohio State out of high school. Is, does it feel different now than when you started high school? Because I, I know that there was some Nolan Rumler from there went to, yeah. to Michigan. Um, there was there was some weirdness around the school in Ohio State back, you know, five seven years ago. How does it feel there now? Is it is it now more pro Ohio State than it used to be? I mean, yeah, I mean. Oh, for all the players, I mean, they're all fans of all different kinds of teams. But, I mean, for the majority, it's definitely Ohio State. I mean, everyone grew, grew up in Ohio. So, I mean, it's just the default team. I mean, who wouldn't want to root for Ohio State? But, I mean, when it comes to, like, the colleges and stuff, I mean, I like I haven't really, but, like, 
mm-hmm. putting favors into each college. I mean, it's really like it's college. It's free education. It's you get to go play football. I mean, mm-hmm. any door is open for you. So, but I mean, yeah, there's definitely been like a link the past two years. I'd say to Ohio State and Hoban more. I would say yes. There's been a lot of more like talking with all the coaches and stuff like that than from before. So I believe, I mean, like you said, no one had ever really gone straight to Ohio state ever in the past five to seven years when Hoban's really like kind of taking that next level. And so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's awesome that they're finally kind of stepping in and looking at our program. I mean, it's, we got some great players. It's just a blessing. If we can go back to the June camp, you were there with Madden Faramo that same day, a big time linebacker yeah. from California. It's pretty much you and Madden were the only guys that were getting a lot of individual attention from Jim Knowles and James Orinitis that day. What did you learn that day that you've taken and used this season to make yourself a better linebacker? I mean, Coach Florinitis and Coach knows they obviously know a ton about everything there has to everything about linebacker I mean you can't really get better than James Larnite is teaching you how to play linebacker so I mean it's just like a lot of the little stuff I mean the basics are really the basics and I mean they're just just playing linebacker but I mean little footwork stuff or like which foot to leave in certain points or like where the attacking point is covering running backs anything like that I mean I had a lot of help there it's blowing my mind i was sitting here and thinking oh it must be super awesome for a, a kid from ohio who's a linebacker to get offered by james Ornitis. and i'm remembering you were probably not born when he left ohio state yet or so like your entire point or vantage point or james Ornitis is his time in the nfl so that that's unique uh could not not his years at ohio state where he was you know a buckus a winner and all that stuff so yeah. there's the visit next weekend eli Again, you never know what happens in recruiting. I mean, you you may get overwhelmed and say, "Hey, I found my home. I, I know where I want to be." Yeah. But what do you ideal world? How does this go for you from here? Like, what's what's the what's the roadmap? Uh, you seem you're a smart kid. I know you're someone that you know is calculated and plotting things out. But best laid plans and all that stuff uh, they change. So, how do you see this going for you? I mean, I really, I'm really looking forward to watching the game against Penn State. I mean, I'm really excited for that. I mean, we'll go from there. Really, that's a big part of like my decision. I'd say. I mean, I'm obviously, I'm obviously thinking very highly of Ohio State. There, I mean, I just love everything about Ohio State. Their coaching staff, their team, their just everything about the environment. So, I mean, I'm really looking forward to watching a game as a recruit because I've been. I last year I went to the Toledo game just with my uncle. Just to like watch the game, we got some pretty good seats. He had an extra ticket, and he's like, "You want to come?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." I mean, it was awesome against Toledo, so I can't even imagine Penn State. Like, it's going to be awesome, especially with the recruit. I'll be able to talk to some of the coaches, really like feel them out, see how they warm up, see how they play, see how they coach, everything like that. So, it should be pretty fun. Um, with this process, able to go a thousand different directions. Yeah. I think it's important sometimes for you guys in your position to still be kids, right? So have you found a way to, or have you not even been put in a position yet where you have to shut out, shut off the recruiting world? I mean, because you're just really getting started. People were just opened up to you on September 1st, the coaches and all that. And now you get this huge offer where your phone goes crazy and now probably hasn't stopped going crazy in a week. Like, have you been able to separate Eli Lee, the high school junior from now this new world? I mean, I I really I just try to stay humble the best that I can. I mean, I'm not going to go around telling every single person, yeah, I just got an Ohio State offer. Like, that's just not who I am. I mean, I'm still just a kid. I'm still Eli Lee from Mogador. Like, I, I came to Hoban just to see how, I mean, we I, when I started coming to Hoban, I was like, man, am I even good enough to like play here? We're going to check it out because, I mean, I've obviously – Obvi- I've obviously always stood out through football all my life, but we really wanted to see like next level, like how great can I be? And that's really what I've been working towards. So, I mean, but I'm, I try to keep myself level headed as possible. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I know I need, I have a lot of work to do. I know I need to just keep working every day that I can. And I mean, job's not done at all. <laughs> I still have a lot of stuff I need to do. I have a couple default, like just getting to know you questions. I like to ask what number, what number do you wear and why I wore? So this is a funny story. So I've, 
always wanted to be my entire life. I've always wanted to be number three. My dad and my uncle were both number three. They both played at Mogador and they were, they both won state championships, two separate teams. And so I grew up watching their like film. They have like the little tapes of their films and like all growing up, watch their films, like their highlight tapes or anything like that. So I've always wanted to be number three. So all through youth football and everything like that, they never had a number three. So I was always number 31 because that was the closest thing I could get to three. And then finally, seventh grade year, I could be number three because we had different jerseys. So I was number three that year. Eighth grade, I got too big for the jersey because it was like a small because it's a single digit number. So I was number 24 for my grandpa. That became my new now favorite number. I love number 24. Um, and so then going into high school, I was 24 for the freshman team. Cause I was just 24 was my new number. And then coach T. So it seems in the past years, Hoban always has like a middle linebacker that's number 33, or at least a linebacker that's 33. And so he just asked me like, as he was giving out Jersey sophomore, he was like, 33 sound good to you. I was like, yeah, sure. It's still number three, but it's number three twice. So that's good enough. I don't really care about my number. I mean, to be honest, it's not like a huge deal to me, but I mean, I've always, I was like, yeah, sure. I'll take number 33. And so it's just been 33 for sophomore and junior year really just because coach t said here you go 33 and ironically if 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 things work out the way you want you yeah. may have to ask your future position coach yeah. at ohio state yeah. if you can wear his number because that was yeah. james laurinaitis's number and it's probably <laughs> not easy to get <laughs> what what when you get in the car what's the first what, what what song pumps you up what's what's one to get you ready for a game i personally I found this out when I was younger, probably middle school. Every time I would listen to music before, right before a game, wasn't as good as a game for me. So I just try to not listen to music. I mean, they'll have music playing on the locker room, but I just, I just like kind of get silently ready, kind of like just like put my head down, just think over everything, just really lock in for the game. That makes me wonder if a lot of guys have headphones on to get keep noise out, as opposed to keeping noise in. Um, yeah. Uh, final thing what like you you go out it's friday night you have you play your game you get home you're starving what is the one thing that you always want to eat like that your mom makes or whatever that is like the one special dish for eli Man, well things can i say two things you can say as many as you want so my mom she she works she's an art teacher so she's not always home 24 she she's a for my elementary school that i went to at mogador she um she's the art teacher for like kindergarten through sixth grade so even like during the summer after two days i'd get home i'd just eat a lot of ham sandwiches but then we got these like frozen pizzas that i've just fallen in love with like these big yeah. like box frozen pizzas i just put it in the oven for 25 minutes and just eat the whole thing. And then I just make myself a box of Mac and cheese, have like some fruit and some vegetables, get my like power drink, like my uh, energy drinks in like for my electrolytes and everything like that. And that was really lunch after two a days. Now I know Ohio doesn't allow NIL yet for high school athletes, but this is how you build the brand. Eli. What is the brand of the pizza that you have fallen in love with? Because Two years from now, you're going to be able to reach out to that company on social media and say, yo, I love your pizza. I think the brand is Red Dragon. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Red what? Red Dragon. Red Dragon. I don't think yeah. I've heard of that one. I, I'm a, <laughs> I like to consider myself a frozen pizza connoisseur, um, but I'll have to search that one out. Look, man, I really do appreciate you taking time. Uh, I know you're busy with school. I know Hoban is very demanding on, on you guys as far as the program and, and making sure your academics and all that are in order. So thank yeah, you very much. Yeah. And, and enjoy that game next weekend, uh, and we look forward to catching up with you after. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate the call. That is Eli Lee. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. This has been Bermanology on the podcast. Thanks for watching. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. I got to hit end recording here. And I need to wait until these numbers get to 100% before I can let you go. It's the one little downside of this system.